Today we will be talking about a competitor in the 74th annual Hunger Games, a tribute who was strong, resourceful, and one who posed a serious threat in the arena. This is the full story of Thresh. Fandom Tree here, and today we are going even deeper into the expansive world of the Hunger Games. As always, if you enjoy this type of content, then consider subscribing as I post a new upload every single week. This video also contains major spoilers for the series, so fair warning. The name Thresh is actually a word that describes a method of harvesting grain which involves failing a plant around, yet another nod to his home district. He comes from District 11, the district known for farming, agriculture, fields, orchards, dairy cattle, and crops. Considered one of the poorest, if not the poorest district, it can be assumed that Thresh was raised in a life of poverty. He surely lived in one of the small shacks found in his district, sharing the small home with his grandmother and his sister, working long hours, likely harvesting crops or wheat for the capital from sunrise to sunset. Thresh was 18 years old and physically described as having dark skin and dark hair, which was cut very short. He was also the tallest tribute, standing at an imposing 6 feet 6 inches tall, with muscles like an ox. His eyes were also described as being a strange golden brown color. He was larger and more muscular than even Cato, and his physical appearance made him feared by all the other tributes, including those in the career pack. Thresh became even bigger and well-fed once the game had begun, since he now was able to eat as he pleased, unlike back home in District 11, where no one gets enough to eat. Cadness Everdeen even thought of Thresh as a physical wonder. For the 74th annual Hunger Games, Thresh was reaped and became the male tribute for District 11, alongside the female tribute for his district, a 12-year-old girl named Rue. Thresh most likely had his name entered into the reaping bowl more times than others, due to the likelihood of him requesting Tesserae, being from a poor district and all. Interestingly, Thresh and Rue are both the largest and smallest tributes in the 74th Games. During the tribute parade, they are dressed in a farming theme, with Thresh in overalls and a crown of silver pieces of wheat around his head. It is not known who Thresh's mentor was in his games, but it could have possibly been Cedar, Chaff, or another living victor from District 11. During the tribute training sessions, Thresh was approached by the career pack to join into their alliance, but he refused as he didn't want to be viewed as a capital lab dog like them. During training, he also witnesses Rue steal Kato's dagger, causing him to blame a boy from another district, leaving Thresh shaking his head at her, grinning in admiration. For his training score, he gets a high score of a 10, however in the film, he receives a 9. During the televised tribute interviews with Caesar Flickerman, Thresh is very short with him, answering him in one-word answers and being surly. Cadness is extremely impressed with this, and envies Thresh as he shows such silent deadly physical power, and thus has no need to make the capital like him with an angle. He becomes a favorite amongst the capital for the games, but it is unknown if he had any sponsorships while in the arena. He participated in and survived the cornucopia bloodbath at the start of the 74th games, making off with a backpack, a water container, and a crescent sword. He is shown killing the District 7 male tribute before fleeing from the bloodbath. Thresh's tactic was to occupy a portion of the arena that was covered in a field of wheat that was as tall as Pita's shoulders. Thresh likely saw the area as a source of food, shelter, and safety, particularly because it resembled the fields of wheat back home in District 11. The careers knew he was lurking in the fields, and Peter states that the careers did not want to attack him while he was in there, as he would have a major advantage, so they avoided him. Thresh comes out of hiding during the feast to claim the backpack containing what he needed most, and overhears Clove taunting Katniss about being Rue's ally, as well as about Rue's death. Furious, he grabs Clove off of Katniss, yelling at her and holding her a foot above the ground. He accuses her of killing Rue, which she truthfully denies. Clove starts screaming for Cato when she realizes that Thresh is holding a large rock in his hand. 
Thresh smashes the rock into her temple, cracking her skull. In the film, he smashes her against the cornucopia twice, forcefully enough to kill her. Thresh then asks Katniss what Clove meant about Katniss and Rue being allies. Katniss tells him that her and Rue had teamed up, and it was Marvel who in fact killed Rue, and that she sang to Rue as she died. To honor Rue as well as repay Katniss for protecting her, he tells Katniss that he will let her go just this once, but that he owes her nothing after that. Thresh tells Katniss to run as Cato is approaching the clearing, and then Thresh grabs not only his backpack but Cato's as well, forcing Cato to chase him instead of Katniss, repaying her even further by putting her in less danger. The content of Cato and Thresh's backpacks are never explicitly stated, but it is possible that they both contained mesh bodysuits for protection from Katniss's arrows, as these backpacks were both large, especially compared to the ones from Districts 5 and 12. Cato kneels beside Clove, begging her to stay with him, but when the cannon signaling her death fires, he then takes off after Thresh. A bit later, the arena becomes inundated with a torrential downpour, a thunderstorm created by the game makers. It is sometime during this rainstorm that Thresh dies at the hands of Cato in an unspecified manner, which Cadness verifies later in the series. It is not known if the extreme weather played a role in Cato being able to kill Thresh, but some people speculate that the rain forced Thresh out of hiding and potentially into combat with Cato. Elsewhere in the arena, Peta and Katniss see Thresh's distorted picture in the sky from their cave, but they don't hear a cannon sound at any point, likely due to the loudness of the storm. Thresh's death in the film is quite different. In the film, you can hear wolf mutts howling, followed by Thresh screaming in the distance. A cannon sounds and his picture appears in the sky afterwards to confirm his death. Thresh places fifth in the 74th Hunger Games, dying before Foxface does, however in the films he dies after Foxface, putting him in fourth place, which is a very high placement for a tribute from a poorer district. Thresh's only known kill was Clove, and in the film he kills Clove in addition to the male tribute from District 7. Cadmus is later attacked by wolf mutts, based off of the fallen tributes, and the one based on Thresh was the largest of all, again referring to his massive build. Thresh's mutt had powerful back legs that allowed it to leap higher than the other mutts, which made her realize who it was based off of. Cadmus kills this particular mutt when it tries to leap onto the cornucopia, where she and Peta have climbed onto for safety. After winning the 74th Hunger Games, Cadmus and Peta go on their victory tour through the many districts of Pan Am. When they are on stage in District 11, Cadmus sees Thresh's family on a small platform with this image on a large screen behind them. These are Thresh's only known family members, an elderly hunchback woman, presumed by Cadmus to be his grandmother, and his sister, a tall muscular girl. She gives his family a small speech about Thresh, saying, I want to give my thanks to the tributes of District 11. I only ever spoke to Thresh one time, just long enough for him to spare my life. I didn't know him, but I always respected him, for his power, for his refusal to play the games on anyone's terms but his own. Their careers wanted him to team up with them from the beginning, but he wouldn't do it. I respected him for that. The crowd falls silent, and for the first time, Thresh's grandmother raises her head with a trace of a smile playing on her lips. This is one of the last times that Thresh is directly mentioned in the books, and he is briefly mentioned further into the series by Katniss when she confirms that Thresh was in fact murdered by Cato, a fact left ambiguous in Book 1. Throughout the Hunger Games, Thresh is shown as having a degree of honor and dignity as well as being vengeful. We also see his preference for working alone as he is solitary for the duration of the games. He posed a threat, demanded respect, and he was definitely not someone to underestimate, with Katniss herself thinking that if she was a sponsor, that Thresh would be the very tribute that she would choose to be a sponsor to. What did you think about Thresh's journey as a tribute in the 74th Annual Hunger Games? Do you feel like he should have won instead? Comment down below what you think. I'd love to hear your opinions on the matter. If you enjoyed this content, then drop a like, and if you'd like to see even more videos like this one, then click the sub button as well as the little bell icon to be notified of all my future uploads as I post new uploads regularly. Thanks for watching, and I will see you in the next one.